Hello everybody, welcome back to the Novelist. This is Fixer, and we're looking at the road ahead. The summer came to an end, and Dan faced a... Oh god. Dan faced a difficult decision. Barb, by the time you get this, we'll be on our way home, so don't write me back here. It's hard to believe this summer's almost over. So much has happened. The show, getting used to life up here, painting more than I have in years, losing Grandma Jo, figuring out where Dan and I are. Part of me doesn't want to leave, but I know it's time. They say you can't go home again. I think I know what that means now. I don't have it in me to explain everything here, but things will never be the same. I don't even know what home I'm going back to. The only thing I do know is that I'm ready to start painting again. For real, like I did before Tommy. I'm scared and excited and nervous all at the same time. I just wish I knew how we were going to make it work. I hope this finds you well. Yours, Linda. Oh boy. Mr. And Mrs. Kaplan! After additional consideration, I'd like to augment my recommendation. I believe that the best course of action for Tommy's development will be continued tutoring throughout the school year. It will be important to coordinate with his teachers and make sure the lessons are aligned, as the for encouragement from both of you is a critical component. Mr. Kaplan, I have observed that Tommy looks to you in particular for validation, which I believe comes from a connection he's made with your profession. If at all possible, you should be a part of his tutoring, although Mrs. Kaplan is more than capable of aiding him as well. I hope I haven't overset my bounds by contacting you, but Tommy is a bright boy and I think with proper support he can not only catch up, but excel. I understand you'll be leaving town shortly, but please don't hesitate to contact me by phone during the school year if I can be of help. This family's gonna fall apart. I'm screwed. Mr. Kaplan, we have reached a decision and are pleased to offer you the position of Assistant Professor of Literature. We had many applicants for the position, and after careful review, we feel your history with the university and your status as a published author will give you a unique connection to our students. We apologize for the lateness of the decision, but an administrative adjustments delayed our annual budget review, and the position was only recently approved for hire. For hire. Professor Strode will handle your course load until September 21st, at which point you will take over classes. We will provide temporary housing for you during the speedy transition, but need your answer as soon as possible. Your offer letter is enclosed. Please sign and return it at your earliest convenience. Okay. So. I like how they say that. That there's a, a budget that was holding back the offer. Which if it would have happened before I came to this house. I could have avoided writing the book. And spent the entire time here with my family. So the late offer has pretty much ruined the entire game for me. That's the way I'm looking at it. Oops, I didn't want to enter his memory, but since we're here, I guess we'll do it. You'd make new ones, buddy. What about my friends? I don't have any friends. Let's just get real. <laughs> I can't win with Tommy. Oh. Oh, well, at least we got this. Oh, that's a that's a nice improvement. Show my friends my new backpack at school. Really? Really? Why is that a choice? And why would him showing uh, his new backpack take in, in precedence over these other choices I'm going to inevitably make? I, I that's lopsided. This could be it. An associate professorship at Hardesty. It's entry level, sure, but everyone has to start somewhere, and it's the perfect situation for writing. The sabbatical program alone makes the job worth it, and the thought of actually working with Professor May? Wait, I guess I'd be calling him Philip now. That'll take some getting used to. But moving's a big step. I can't imagine a new school with new kids would be easy for Tommy. I know staying in Laurenton would be better for him and Linda, but they aren't handing out professorships on the corner. 
This isn't the kind of offer you pass up without a very good reason. But I might have two good reasons. Tried to sleep on it last night. What a joke. You have to be able to sleep for that to work. Oh, boy. I just talked things over with Dan, and we really have some serious thinking to do. The job at Hardesty sounds like a great opportunity for him, but moving would be so hard on us. I really want to join Art for All, and after everything we've been through with Tommy, it would be better for him to have some stability. I could even go full-time if Dan found a steady job, though I know he can't do that if he takes on extra tutoring with Tommy, and I'd never fault him for that. If we stay in Laurenton and Dan works with Tommy, I could still do the program part-time. Either way, it'd be better for Tommy and me than moving. But I know that professorship would mean so much to Dan. Can't everything be simple just once? Shit. <laughs> oh boy. This is not going to be good. Might not get another. All right, where are you at, Dan? How long is the drive? Two hours. We'd have to move. It's impossible to get into a rhythm right now. This place was supposed to create some peace and quiet, but I almost never get two unbroken writing blocks in the same day. I know I'll never get exactly the schedule I want, that's just a fact of life. But that doesn't make it easier to get good work done with everything else going on. I just gotta figure out a way to push through. No other choice, really. This book isn't going to write itself. Right. That's bad, but it sounds like it could have been worse. Dinner this week. Roasted chicken. Quiche Lorraine, grilled steaks, Anne's crock pot, crock, pork, crock pot pork chops, Tommy's taco night, hot dogs, mac and cheese. Okay. Why does it seem really quiet? Feels like the sound is gone. Oh, I'm in. That's because I'm in his. Memory. That's why I got confused. Paul, there were days when I thought this moment would never come. When I finish writing this, I'm going to pack everything up and drop the manuscript in the mail. My palms are sweating just thinking about letting it go. I had no idea how hard it would be to finish this one. It took everything I had, and it's hard to look back over the summer without laughing. To think the plan was to get away from everything and just focus on the book. But you can't get away from yourself. Life doesn't give a damn about geography. I don't know when you'll get this, or where we'll be when you do, or what you'll think. I know what I think, but objectivity left the building months ago. Some days I think this is the one, other days I have a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach that says my career is over. All I can do is drop this in the mail and hope. Here goes. Yeah, I'm not confident either, bro. Okay. What next? Linda! Linda! There you are! Alright. I could even go full time if. You can say it. If I got a real job. Mm hmm. Well, I guess family time every night was too much to ask for. That worries me, though Dan did agree to be at dinner every night, so he's at least trying. It's just, we came here to start fresh and set things right. We were on such a bad course before. And if we can't make time to do it right while we're here, how will we be able to do it when we get back home? There'll be so much going on when we get back. Are we doing enough here? Mm -hmm. Send my second painting for the full-time application. Read uh, Dan's thoughts for the final clue. Is Dan upstairs? He's typing. I can hear the typewriter. I don't know why. I even... Alright, so there's, there's my final decision, guys. I can either 
get a job as um, a professor. She can go full-time painting, and Tommy can show his goddamn backpack at school. I don't understand why the backpack is even an option. Oh, I know what it's saying. It's saying he wants to show his friends at his school back home, meaning don't move. And and the thing is, I don't... I don't know. The choice is going to piss people off. It's going to ruin someone's life and everybody's going to be miserable. I don't like how... I don't... I don't like how these decisions are... are... are put forward as mutually exclusive because so many of these decisions are not mutually exclusive. This one, however, does feel a little mutually exclusive. She, um, she can't join that group or whatever if we move. Well, why not? It's two hours. So, but a professor job is a steady income. It's a quote-unquote real job, you know? She's saying she could go full-time if he gets a real job. And that is a real job. And and he'll be able to write whenever he can, but he'll at least still have a real job with a, with a steady income, right? So that's good. I feel that Choosing Dan means that Linda will still be able to get the paint, but it'll turn my son in, probably into a psychotic killer. Choosing Linda means that I'll get to focus on Tommy, but I won't be able to write or do anything else, really. And focusing on Tommy means that Linda will probably still get to paint. I don't know. Um, what should I pick? I should I should cut it off here and put it in a new episode, right? Just kidding. Okay. Envelope painting or backpack? Ah. Envelope painting or backpack? Oh, I don't want to go in the memories. I just wanted to see your thoughts. Tickets are booked for Tahoe in September. Just the two of us. Oh, that's good. Which means if I pick up the... the job as a professor, we probably can't go. God damn it! <sighs> I'm really, really torn. <clears throat> and, and the thing is, if she becomes a full-time painter... Painting, I, I, I'm making an assumption here because I don't know. I'm not a painter or a writer, but I, I'm assuming a paint a painter is just as um. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. It's not as a guaranteed profession like writing is. You know, she can start painting and whatnot and and not do well or something doesn't go well. She doesn't have good shows. She doesn't sell her stuff. And then we're all screwed. Hmm. It's really tempting to, to select the envelope. And it doesn't say that if I select the envelope, I can't tutor him. Although they'll probably say something like, well, because he's working 7 in the morning to 7 at night, he can't tutor Tommy now. And he's growing up to be... Stupid, and he's going to stub his toe and trip and fall and kill himself somewhere. That's not even English. I'm really torn. I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at decisions, I guess. Hmm. No, I just wanted to look at the picture. At least he's got a new picture. Probably the school friends. Ugh. Hmm. Just say it. Take it or don't. No in between. (sighs) 
I wonder, I wonder if, what would happen if I were to choose the envelope and do Tommy as the compromise? Does that mean I would drive to work every day to two hours? That way Tommy and Linda are happy because they're staying back at home? They don't, they're not, they're not moving? Hmm. I'm leaning towards financial stability with the envelope in the mail. And I'm thinking because I would probably normally choose that, maybe I should just choose something else. I think, I think that's what I'll do. I think, I mean, this, this game is called The Novelist, so, so he is the primary character, right? So I think most people would probably choose Dan. And, and I, I was leaning that way myself. You get a steady job as a, as a professor and all that jazz, but I think part of me is curious to see what would happen if I were to choose the painting for Linda and Tommy as the compromise and Dan can fuck off. Hmm. I think that's what we'll do. Just to keep it interesting, because I think Dan is the obvious... I don't want to say the obvious choice, but probably the most financially sound choice. So my guess is maybe we'll we'll do this and the family will go bankrupt and they'll be living on the street. That's about the best we can hope for. I thought he wants to show his backpack. Oh, whisper to Dan. Oh shit, there's no compromise. Oh god damn it. There's no compromise. I wish I knew that. It should have said something. I was under the assumption that there'd be a compromise. Maybe uh, that was wrong of me to assume that. All right, gonna get a drink of water before, because I have a feeling I'll be reading a lot. Why you should, you should, you should. Dan realized that supporting his wife didn't mean completely giving up on his writing career, so he declined the professorship offer and started looking for a part-time job. Linda joined art for all full-time when she blossomed as an artist. After a few months, she started her own workshop for recovering alcoholics. She knew she found her calling. Tommy was happy to see his friends on the first day of school, and although his schoolwork was dif still difficult, he was glad he didn't have to move. The stability of going to the same school was good for him, and his mother explained to him how hard it has been for his father to turn down a new job. In his own way, Tommy understood. Aww. That's so sad. Dan could barely get the words out when he called the hardesty and declined the offer. He knew they wouldn't care about his reasons, and he turned the job down with full knowledge that he might never receive an offer again. He would have to keep clawing his way forward, praying that the next advance check would come. His career depended on nothing but the quality of his work. And that's how the Kaplan summer and the house on the cliff came to an end. It was much more than just a single session on the coast. Dan's choices there would come to define the rest of his life. Dan tried, but he couldn't get the final draft of his book into shape. It was never published, and he gave up writing completely. He was devastated by the loss of not just his career, but his dream. He never recovered professionally or creatively, and he spent the rest of his life bouncing between jobs that he could bear. Oh my god, that is heartbreaking! And by the end of the summer, Tommy was a much happier child. His self-confidence had grown, and when he went back to school, he emerged from his shell, making new friends. His teacher encouraged his love of drawing, and by high school, he developed his style enough to earn a scholarship to art school. He became an accomplished comic book artist and a loving, had a loving family of his own. When they left the house, Dan and Linda's love was deeper than it had ever been. They spent the rest of their lives on an endless honeymoon, traveling and embracing life in a way that few couple, couples ever do. They grew old together, always secure in a deep love that carried them through whatever life handed them. Dan would look back on that summer from time to time and wonder why he had made the choices he had. He never quite shook the feeling that the voice in his head had been more than just a voice, and in quiet moments if he, he imagined if he had 
been a character in someone else's novel. At times he was almost sure of it. I really liked the idea of the game. I was perhaps frustrated by some of the the choices that were that were presented to me. A lot of them I felt were not mutually exclusive at all. I felt that that the compromises weren't much of compromises. I don't think so. I, I'm a bit disappointed in that. Uh, but I guess I guess if you made them a little bit more too detailed, I guess, You, where, where, where would it end? The game would, would be a huge drag, I guess. I don't know. But that was my main complaint, where, where the compromises didn't feel mutually exclusive, or at least the decisions presented didn't feel mutually exclusive. This is not a weapon. Lower this for it. But, you know, I guess, you know, it got the idea across, you know, life is full of all these difficult choices and, and a lot of the times they're at odds with each other and and um, you do have to weigh what's what's important to you and I guess I got that point across and it was really I don't know it, it, it was really heartbreaking at the end to read the that about Dan that you know it, just like that it, it was gone you know his just by me choosing to, to work with a wife to become a, a full-time painter, it completely destroyed his dreams. And again, I don't, I don't like how those are mutually exclusive. I don't know why it's an either-or thing. But yeah, that, that's, that was really sad. That, you know, just like that, boom. He spent the rest of his life wondering, you know. He didn't, he didn't get to fulfill his dreams. But he had a happy life with his family, and, and that's important too. I know, pretty interesting game. If, if you lasted this long, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. And um, thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next series. Bye-bye.